Sabbath School time! Hello and happy Sabbath! I am glad that you're back with us for another episode of It's Sabbath School Time. I'm your host, Auntie Simone, and I look forward to spending time with you for the remainder of this program. Now today, before we get into our program, we are going to let you know that you can visit www.gracelink.net for your Sabbath School lessons, starting with the beginner all the way to the junior, and you'll have other resources as you learn more about Jesus. All right, let's get into the program and let's see who we have. Our welcome will be done today by Kyle Andrew Lewis, and he attends the Stanbury Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church. After that, we are going to hear Naomi Morgan, and she will be doing the opening prayer for us. All right. It's done, see you. That the Lord is good, praise His name, praise His name. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to our Sabbath school. Stay tuned, relax, and enjoy. Welcome, welcome, stay welcome. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up in our right minds. Lord, protect us today and help us throughout the day to listen to your words. Help all the children that are watching virtually to learn something from, from this program. Please, Lord, guide us and protect us, we pray. And may we worship you for the rest of our lives. In your name I pray, amen. Welcome to What's Inside Auntie Simone's Fruit and Vegetable Basket. Last week we looked at a fruit and I asked you to name that fruit. Well, the name of the fruit is June Plum. Other islands or countries have various names for it. Some people make ice cream, jams, jellies, and stew them. And they're actually not bad, it's pretty good. Well, I hope you're able to get one of these fruits and that you will enjoy just as much as I do. All right, well, have a wonderful day. See you back here next Sabbath so you can find out what else is in Aunt Simone's fruit and vegetable basket. Bye. This week in our special feature section, we will hear from Nathaniel and Abigail Sales. They attend the Trenchtown Seventh-day Adventist Church. Can you imagine what heaven will be like? Abigail, what do you think heaven is gonna be like? Hmm, let me think. Uh, streets of gold, peace, fruits, healthy foods, and angels flying everywhere. I can imagine it now. And we'll be able to ride on tiger's backs, or even other dangerous animals, cause in heaven, those animals are not dangerous anymore. Oh, I can't wait! And we're going to even be able to meet Jesus. Oh, I can't wait until we go to heaven. Me too. I hope we get to heaven. Me too, I really do. Well... At this time, we are going to have our song, the Sing Along Time. And we're going to hear from Kwasine Young, and she attended Tradiga Park Seventh day Adventist Church. Song number two will be done by Leah Brown, who attended Tabernacle of Joy and New Life Seventh day Adventist Church in Brooklyn, New York. That's right, two churches. Then we'll hear from Kadeen Morris, who attended the Old Road Seventh day Adventist Church. Run along, get your instruments if you have any, and sing or play along with them. There will be mountains that I will have to climb. And there will be battles that I will have to fight. But victory or defeat 
It's up to me to decide. But how can I expect to eat if I never try? I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me. The road would be easy as I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Never said there would be trials, never said I wouldn't fall, never said that everything would go the way I want it to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel a hope is gone, I just lift my head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. Oh, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I know you didn't bring me out here to leave me lonely even when i can't see clearly i know that you are with me so i can't i just can't give up now i've come too far from where i started from Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I just can't give up now come too far from where i started from nobody told me the road would be easy but i don't believe he brought me this far to leave me It's not just about the manger where the baby lays. It's not all about the angels who sang for him that day. It's not all about the shepherds or the bright and shining star. It's not all about the wise men who traveled from afar. It's about the cross, it's about my sin, it's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away so that you and I could have realized something. 
it's about to cross It's not just about the good things in this life I've done It's not all about the treasures or the trophies that I've won it's not all about the righteousness that I find within It's about this precious blood that set me from my sin It's about the cross, it's about my sin It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again It's about the stone That was rolled away So that you and I could have realized something It's about the cross The beginning of the story is Wonderful and great But let's the end Save you, and that's why we celebrate. Hey, it's about the cross, it's about my sin, it's about that Jesus came to be born one so that we could be born again. It's about God's love nailed to a tree. It's about how every drop of blood that flowed from him when it should have been me. No, that was rolled away so that you and I could have realized someday. So that you and I could have realized someday. It's about the cross, it's about the cross, it's about the cross, it's about the cross. There were twelve disciples, Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James' brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James' son of Alphys, by his Simon, Judas, and Bethlehem, and you. He has called us to, he has called us to, we are his disciples, I am one in you. He has called us to, He has called us to, we are His disciples, we His work must do. There were twelve disciples, Jesus called to help him, Simon, Peter, and you, James' brother, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Alphys, but if Simon, Judas, and birth on a new. He has called us to, he has called us to. We are his disciples, I am one in you. He has called us to, he has called us to. We are his disciples, we his work must do. It's now time for the Sabbath School lessons. We are going to hear from Auntie Frenita, who will be doing the kindergarten and the primary lesson studies. After that, we'll hear from Daniil Luck, who will be doing the junior lesson review. And she attends the Brayton Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Frenita, and I have a story for you called Hiding from God. Today's memory verse is from Psalms 100 
verse 5. It says, The Lord is good and His love endures forever. The message for today's story is God loves us all the time, even when we do wrong. Have you ever done something so naughty that you were ashamed? A long time ago, Adam and Eve did just that. Adam and Eve really liked the Garden of Eden home that God had created for them. Every day they learned something new. One day, Eve found herself in the middle of the garden beside a beautiful tree. She knew that was the only tree in the garden whose fruit God said that they were not to eat. Suddenly she heard a voice. Did God really say you cannot eat of any tree in the garden? Who was that? Eve looked up. There in the tree branches, she saw a beautiful serpent, and it was talking to her. We can eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, Eve answered, but not the fruit of this tree, or we will die, she added. You will not die said the serpent, who was really Satan. God is just trying to keep something special away from you. Go ahead. Try it. It is really quite good. Eve looked at the fruit. It did look good. So she decided to believe the serpent. She knew better, but she took some fruit and ate it anyway. Then she picked some more and gave some to Adam. Adam also decided to disobey God. He quickly took the fruit and ate it. Suddenly, Adam and Eve were so ashamed that they wanted to cover themselves and hide. When they disobeyed God, they lost their robes of light. So they sewed together some fig leaves and covered themselves. Later that day, God came to walk with them. But when they heard God calling, Adam and Eve hid from him. Adam, called God, where are you? Eve, Adam, where are you? Finally, Adam answered, I, I, I heard you calling and I was afraid, so I hid. God knew what had happened. Did you eat from the fruit of the tree I told you not to eat from? First Adam blamed Eve, it's her fault, and then Eve blamed the serpent, it's the serpent's fault. God was very, very sad. He told Adam and Eve that they would have to leave their beautiful garden home because they had disobeyed, but God still loved them. He used animal skins to make clothes for them, and he promised that some day his own son would die to rescue them from their sins. God truly loved Adam and Eve, and he loves you and me too. Even when we do something wrong, he still loves us. God is always ready to forgive us if we are really, truly sorry for what we have done. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Hello everyone, it's Aunt Fernita, and we're studying Lesson 4, A Picture of God. The message is God's commandments help us understand Him. The memory verse for this week is from Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Mika jumped up and down with excitement as she looked at the letter from her grandma. In the letter was a picture of grandma in her new garden. It helped Mika see exactly how Grandma looked now, and it reminded her of the fun things that they had done. Letters, photos, phone calls, and video chats help you remember what that person is like. 
In today's lesson, God gave the Israelites some words that helped them know what He is like. This was the day. God had told the Israelites to get ready. He was coming to Mount Sinai to talk with them. For two days they had been getting ready, washing their clothes, and above all, staying away from the mountain. God had forbidden them to touch it. Thunder and lightning and a thick, dark cloud hung over the mountain. Suddenly, a loud trumpet blasted. The people trembled. Moses led the people to the foot of the mountain. Smoke covered the mountain and the earth shook. The sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then God spoke. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. First, God reminded the Israelites who He was. He loved them. He wanted them to know and love Him too. He knew what they needed to be happy. So He came to Mount Sinai to give them the Ten Commandments. God spoke, You shall have no other gods before me. God wanted them to respect His power to make Him the most important thing in their lives. Then God said, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For a long time the Israelites had been in Egypt where people worshipped many idols. They had forgotten how to worship God. God spoke again. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who misuses his name. When we love someone, we are careful to respect their name. For the fourth commandment, God said, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. God gave us the Sabbath as a special time to rest and to get to know Him better. He also wants us to remember the wonderful way He created us and cares for us. When God gave the fifth commandment, He said, Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. God gave us parents to love us, to care for us, and to help us learn right from wrong. In return, God wants us to respect them and to obey them. God knew that living in loving families is best for us. The next four commandments were short, telling the Israelites how they were to act toward other people. You shall not murder. God alone can give life, and He wants us to respect and protect it. You shall not commit adultery. God wants happy families. He wants parents to be married to each other and to love each other in a special way they don't share with anyone else. You shall not steal. God wants us to respect the things that belong to others. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. God's words are true, and He wants our words to be true as well. The last commandment told the Israelites how they should feel when other people have nice things that they don't have. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. God wants us to focus on Him, not on other people or what they have. God gave these commandments to the Israelites to help them understand Him and what is important to Him. And God knew the Israelites would be happier if they followed His rules. God's rules still tell us what is important to Him. The Ten Commandments still help us understand what God is like. They still give us a picture of God who loves us and wants the best for us. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy for Gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso.
The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Lesson 4. The topic is clear-headed or beheading. Today's part text is taken from Romans 12, verse 1. And it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. The story is about John the Baptist, Herod, Herodes, and Solomon. John was in a prison cell. He would always remember when he was beside the Jordan, going for walks early in the morning, and spending quiet times talking with God, preaching to hundreds of people. One day, one of the listeners was Herod Antipas. He was a ruler of the local area. John preached, repent your selfish ways, lying lips, pride, and adultery, and be baptized, and don't be like Herod, who took his brother's wife. Herod listened and talked to John after everyone left. At home, Herod started to act differently, but Herodias, the wife of his brother, wasn't pleased. She told him to put John in prison, and he did. But he could not bring himself to kill him because he thought John was a prophet. Herodias continued plotting to get rid of John until finally her chance came. There was a party for Herod's birthday, and there, and there was a lot of food intoxicating wine. Herodias told him to eat and drink and forget about his problems and that he did. Herod was drunk and a young woman named Salome came to dance with him. Herod wasn't thinking at all and he wanted to impress Salome as if he was powerful and generous. So he told her he would give her anything that she wanted. Up to half of my kingdom, said the king drunkenly. So the ran to her mother for instructions, and her mother told her to ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. When Salome told Herod that he thought she was joking because she was also drunk too. But when he looked in her eyes, he realized she wasn't joking. So he sent a message to the prison, and before the night was over, Herodias and Salome had John the Baptist's head on a platter. My lesson from the story is not to drink intoxicating wine. Lesson studies are all done, and now we're going to have song number four that will be done by Torian Hunter, and she attends the Palm Seventh Day Adventist Church. And I'm the one who I've been so 
Well, the program is coming to a close, and at this time, we are going to have our goodbye and the closing prayer. So Megan Thelwell from the former Seventh-day Adventist Church will be doing the closing prayer. After that, Samuel Moncrief from the same church, former Seventh-day Adventist Church, will be doing the goodbye. Let us pray, everyone. Dear Jesus, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything that you are going to do. Please bless the children program and please cause your your power to be on me and please help us to do your will always. Bless the children program and please help souls to be one. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Bye from Sawa School. See you next week. Hello parents, guardians, and churches. Would you like to have your child participate in the It's Sabbath School Time program? They can do the welcome, prayer, sing, or play an instrument, say the goodbye, or do a short testimony, praise, 
poem, short children's story, or skit for the special feature section. Please send your videos to it's Sabbath School Time PSDA at gmail.com. Again, it's Sabbath School Time PSDA at gmail.com. Boys and girls, we use this time to say thank you to God for allowing us to have this program. Our thank you also go to NCU TV and NCU FM, your education and wellness station. It's now time to say thank you to all the participants in our program today. Kyle Andrew did the welcome. Naomi did the opening prayer. Our special feature was done by Nathaniel and Abigail. Song number one was done by Kwasine. Song number two, Leah. Song number three, Kadeen. While our junior lesson review was done by Daniil. Song number four by Torian, Closing Prayer by Megan, and Our Goodbye was done by Samuel. The Sabbath School Time team leaders are Jackie Morrison, Children and Adolescent Ministry Leader, Sylvina Williams, a Sabbath School teacher, yours truly, Simone Harris, Sabbath School teacher and producer, and Micaiah Morgan, our assistant producer. Now, there's something I want you to do for me. Now, last week I told you I would have something for you to do. So, here's what I want you to do. I want you to email us and let us know what's something special that your family does on Sabbath because it's Sabbath that makes it special from any other day of the week. And I will do my best to read some of them on air. If I don't get to read all of them, please know that I, I, I won't be able to get to all of them. Give us your name and the church that you attend. All right. See you next Sabbath, and don't forget to answer the question. All right, bye.